and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how you can achieve amazing results with fewer steps using Photoshop CS4's intelligent scaling, alignment, and auto blending. With this first series of images, I'll select them all and then choose Tools, Photoshop, and Photo Merge. Now, Photo Merge has been in previous versions of Photoshop, but in CS4, we've improved the quality of the blending as well as added the ability to remove a vignette and correct for geometric distortion, which is what I would like to do in this case. Photoshop will open up each one of those individual documents and put them into a single file. It will then align each one of those layers and then blend the layers together seamlessly. And here are the amazing results. In fact, let's return back to Bridge for one moment. And I'm just going to open this image here. This is the exact same sequence or series of images brought through Photo Merge without the new option in Photoshop CS4. So we can see there's quite a dramatic difference. That's with the perspective correction on, and that is without. All right, let's return back to Bridge. In this next series of images, I'm going to want to change two of the options in Photo Merge. Because of the wider angle of view, I'm going to change the layout to cylindrical, and I'm also going to turn on the vignette removal. Now when Photoshop stitches these images together, it's going to bear in mind that I was looking at a large field of view left to right, and it's going to remove the vignettes that were added because the images were photographed using a wide angle lens. And here are the results. Absolutely fantastic. We can see that it's removed the vignetting. It's done this seamless blending and it's done so with the least amount of distortion. In fact, if we go back here to Bridge and I open up the secondary file that I had created earlier, we can toggle back and forth and see this is without using the vignette removal. And if I toggle to the other one, that is with the new feature turned on. So that's with it off and you can kind of see this dark area here in the sky and that is with it turned on. In case you're wondering, I'm just toggling between my open documents using the command tilde. All right, let's go ahead and return to bridge. This next set of images also really demonstrates the power in Photoshop CS4 to correct for distortion. As you can see, I'm standing right in front of this building, photographing it. I'm standing actually on the bottom step here. I can't move backwards because there's a fountain. And look at the distortion as I shoot in two separate layers. I photograph once across the top of the building, that's the top row here, and then I photograph along the bottom half of the building. Instead of the, taking the time to run through it, let's skip right to the result, which is this image here. Just I added a little bit of vibrance there at the end, but you can see how well Photoshop CS4 has corrected this distortion as it's mapping it as a cylindrical panorama. I can also take advantage of this advanced blending technology in Photoshop CS4 when working with multiple images and combining them together to increase their dynamic range. In this case, I'm going to load these files into Photoshop layers. Bridge hands off the files to Photoshop. Photoshop automatically opens them, putting each one on its own layer within the same document. As we look at the three exposures, this first one, which is overexposed in the highlight areas, still gives me a good exposure in what would have been the shadow areas. In this kind of medium exposed image, you can see that the side of the barn as well as the roof and all of kind of the mid-tone areas are properly exposed. And then this last exposure, which is obviously underexposed, all of our highlight areas still hold detail. Selecting all of these layers and choosing to auto blend them using the stack images with seamless tones and colors, it allows Photoshop to create one fabulously exposed image. Now, taking this one step further, we know that Photoshop's auto blend can blend exposure, but can it also blend depth of field? Well, this image is made up of multiple layers. I've already auto-stacked them. 
And what I want to do is see if I can't gain a better depth of field. We can see that there are two issues here as I turn on the different layers. For one, they're not aligned with one another. That's because I wasn't shooting on a tripod. And different areas are in focus. We can see here that the top layer is in focus in the foreground and this bottom layer down here in the layer stack is in focus in the background. So the first thing that I'll do, simply select the layers and auto align them. Once the images are aligned, all we're going to need to do is blend them. And now everything is in focus just like I wanted it. Okay. Back to Bridge. In this last example, I can't wait to show you the content-aware scaling in Photoshop CS4. Talk about a time saver. If you've ever had to convert an image to fit a different crop aspect ratio or a different layout, well, instead of using Free Transform, which we all know would squish the golfers, I'm going to use Photoshop CS4's new content-aware scale. Now watch as I squish this image to fit the new aspect ratio. You can see that Photoshop is intelligently getting rid of the areas that are less important, the waves and the grass between the golfers, leaving the golfers at the same size. Of course, if I zoom out a bit more and we scale this up, you can see that it does the same thing in either dimension. Here I would be scaling the sky, and again, it would not scale the golfers. I can also do this with the grass below. Fantastic results that can be especially useful when an image has to be resized for a print layout or maybe a website production. If you have a specific area that's more important than the others, you can create a mask and then that mask will show up here and be protected. You can even protect skin tones. I'll go ahead and apply this and then all that's left is simply to crop this down so that it is the correct size. Since we're talking about reducing design time, I want to mention the Kudo technology in Photoshop CS4 that allows for soft proofing the display of images that are seen by people with various types of color deficiency. As well as in the print dialog box, we can now preview out of gamut colors to help you correct images before printing, again, saving you valuable time. And 16 bit printing is available on the Mac platform for those printers that support it. As you can see, in Photoshop CS4, you can achieve amazing results with fewer steps using the content aware scaling, auto alignment, and blending. <music>